Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. Benjamin Franklin It's no secret that governments tend to be fond of passing laws that obligate their citizenries to the government. In fact, most countries operate a system of direct taxation, which, in itself, allows a government to enact a host of laws obligating the individual to the government, complete with significant penalties for failure to comply. And, of course, governments, when deciding what sort of general behavior should be tolerated by its citizenry, tend to legislate less for recompense to those whom a citizen may have wronged, and more for recompense to the government itself, even if it has not been wronged in the slightest. Generally speaking, the larger the country and the older the country, the more extensive the laws. Of course, in a country that claims to be a democracy, the idea is supposed to be that the will of the people is followed by its elected representatives, which suggests that the people actually have a say in how they are governed, that their government may only impose such laws as the majority agree on. Well, there's nothing unusual in that concept. In fact, all contract law is founded on the idea that when two or more parties come to an agreement, a contract is formed. Moreover, as additional laws are enacted, the contract can be modified accordingly. However, if I were to ask you to show me a copy of your current contract with your government, I'm guessing that not only could you not produce one, but that it never occurred to you that you should expect one. That being the case, the only way that we could cobble together a contract would be to list a set of general principles under which you are presently governed. We can use US law as an example, but much the same laws are common in many other countries. For the sake of convenience, we shall use the term servant and master to describe you and your government. 1. The servant may not leave the master's property without permission. In order to travel outside the US, you are required to present your government-issued, identifying document for approval for you to leave, even briefly. The decision as to whether you may leave is unilaterally for your government to decide. 2. The servant may not receive income of any kind without disclosure to the master. All income that you receive, whether it be through wages or the sale of goods or services, must be reported to your government. 3. The servant shall pay a large percentage of all income to the master. The amount taken from you will be determined unilaterally by your master. 4. The servant may not own anything that the master disapproves of. The master shall have the authority to declare any commodity or good unlawful. 5. The master shall have the authority to fine or imprison the servant. If the master determines that the servant has violated any of rules number 2 to 4, he shall be entitled to find the servant or lock him in a cage for a period of time to be determined by the master. 6. The master shall have the authority to monitor the servant at all times. The servant's activities shall be monitored by the master through telephone, texts, emails, social media, and other forms of communication. Of course, these are just the basics, but you get the idea. When looked at in these terms, it becomes difficult to maintain the self-deception that I live in a democracy, my government exists to serve me, not the other way around. Interestingly, in most countries, such contract does exist under the guise of law. And yet, this is not a contract that the servant agreed to. It existed before he was born, and he was obligated to adhere to it, merely by being born in a given jurisdiction. Moreover, the master has the right to change the contract to the detriment of the servant, at will, and may do so unilaterally. The larger the country, the greater the degree to which the servant is unable to take part in the discussion as to whether a proposed change in law has his approval. 
Not surprising, then, that the larger the country, the more numerous the laws are likely to be, and the more imposing they are likely to be on the servant. Still, the relationship of master and slave exists most everywhere on earth, to one degree or another. And it's understandable for you to conclude, yeah, well, it's the same, no matter where you go, what are you gonna do about it? And yet, that's not exactly true. It's not the same everywhere. There are countries, for example, that have no direct taxation of any kind. The individual, therefore, is not required to disclose his income to his government. Similarly, in countries where there's no tax on property, the government doesn't have the power to confiscate property for failure to pay a tax. Also, there are borders between some countries that are porous. Nationality documents are, in some cases, merely waived at border agents and, in some cases, dispensed with entirely. Most governments declare some items to be illegal, but the first world appears to have a lock on regulating or outlawing virtually every commodity. And, of course, the monitoring of the populace is quite unequal. The more sophisticated the technology in a country, the greater the surveillance. This does not mean that you have to live in a hut in the jungle to escape surveillance. It means that many countries simply cannot afford to fund or choose not to fund maximum surveillance. The bad news is that, in any country, we're enslaved by our government to one degree or another. The good news is that we can, at least at the present, vote with our feet and choose to reside in a location where we have greater autonomy, in some locations, far greater autonomy. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.